Hello, my dear class nine students. My name is Ben Tungo, and I'll be your science teacher. And today we're going to start a third chapter that is atoms and molecules, clear? And this is one of the very important chapter for, uh, all chapters are interesting and important, but this chapter basically, uh, once if you know like uh, all the details, like from class nine onwards, we're going to study th uh, these atoms and molecules till your class 12 and till your degrees, clear? So now what is atom? Now atoms, these are the smallest particle, okay? Which is not uh, divisible, which is not visible, indestructible, okay? So these are the tiniest particle. Example, uh, students, let's say, uh, let's take example, uh, this building, okay, this building. Now, uh, this building, if we just see the construction, it has been started from a small brick, right? This is just a single brick, but a collection of all the brick will give us a good building, right? Now, what will happen? Okay, now, if we break this brick again, what will happen? Again, we'll get a powdery thing, right? It can be further divided, it can be further divided. Now, at some point of time, at some point of time, you'll get an object which is not visible with your naked eye, and that would be known as an atom, okay? Now, we have an atom, but long time, 500 BC, let's go back there, okay? 500 BC, in India, though atom was not known, we have considered this term, okay? We have considered this term. Now, let's say uh, this is a name of Indian philosopher. Name is Maharishi, 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 okay. Now Maharishi, he observed and he said that uh, there are like this tiniest particle where like matter, if we just break them, if we cut them, there will be uh, at some point of time, there will be a, uh, uh, an invisible particle, okay. And uh, he, he termed it as like an uh, atom in Indian way, okay. But atom was not known. Okay, but we Indians, like we considered that. Now, after some time, again, like Pakhuda came, okay? This is also a name of an Indian philosopher, clear? And Pakhuda said that these small, small particles, they combine in various form to give us a matter, okay? They combine in various form to give us a matter. Matter, as you all know, it's anything that has uh, mass, okay, and that occupies space, okay? So now this is like a small introduction, okay, about like India, okay? Now let's start with our, uh, the definition of the atoms and also the laws, okay? So atoms, you can simply write, this is the building block of all material, clear? Building block of all material, which is not visible with our naked eye. Now, students, uh, we know that elements combine to form a compound, right? Elements, they, com they combine to form a compound. But uh, like I have said in beginning 500 BC, even Indians, we have con considered about these atoms, right? Founded by Maharishi and Pakuda. But uh, experimentally, it was not proven, okay? Only by the end of 18th century, a man named, a scientist, okay, named Antoine Lavoisier. Antoine Lavoisier, he, uh, he laid the foundation of a law of chemical combination, okay? Law of chemical combination is one which proves and which agrees that atoms, yes, they are the building block of all matter, clear? Okay, so now Antoine de Vosier gave us this first law that is uh, law of conservation of mass. Okay, so under this chemical combination, we have two laws. That is law of conservation of mass, which was founded by Antoine de Vosier. And the second law is law of definite proportion, okay, which was founded by Joseph L. Prost. So first we'll study about the law of conservation of mass.
So students, law of conservation of mass means mass can neither be created nor be destroyed. Clear, we can simply, we can keep it simple. Mass can neither be created nor be destroyed. Suppose if I have this A, okay, this is a person, let's say, and this person, if his mass is, his or her mass is 10 gram, clear? And now I have this second person. If the mass is another 10 gram, then what I'm getting? I'll get a combination of A, B, right? Then all together I'm going to get 10 to 10, 20 gram. So see, in the beginning, like in the reactant, we have 20 gram, right? Now in the results, we have 20 gram. That means mass was not lost. We did not create anything. We did not put anything extra out there, nor uh, it is not less, right? It is exact. Mass in the left-hand side and the right-hand side is same. Clear? So now, this is uh, an example for law of conservation of mass, but uh, in your textbook, uh, you have uh, a uh, question related with this uh, law, okay? Which we will do together. So now, for now, I want all of you to turn to your page uh, 32, okay? And then there is a in-text question number one. Please copy down the copy down or if just uh, go through this uh, question, okay? While I'll just write the question and we'll solve together. Students, okay, I have written this question. This is in text number one and I have written this question in a short, uh, uh, short form, okay? So now uh, for this question, uh, you can refer, like I've said, page 32 in text question number one, okay? Now, in this question, what we have to do? We have to see whether this reaction obeys the law of conservation of mass or not, okay? So now what they are saying is in a, in a reaction, we have 5.3 gram of sodium carbonate, okay? So this is sodium carbonate, okay? Sodium carbonate, and then this one is 5.3 gram, clear? And then, the second one here in a reaction, 5.3 gram of sodium carbonate reacts with six gram of reacts with six gram of ethanoic acid. Okay. So this one is six gram. Clear. So this is the left hand side. Now we have a result here. Okay, result. So now this reacting sodium carbonate and ethanoic acid, we will get carbon dioxide. Okay, we'll get carbon dioxide 2.2 gram. 2.2 gram, and then we will also get water 0 0.9 gram. Water, that is 0 0.9 gram, okay? Okay, and then we also have 8.2 gram of uh, sodium ethanoate, okay? 8.2 gram of sodium ethanoate. Okay, so students, okay, I'll explain from here, okay? So this part, it is the react result part, and this part, it is the uh, left-hand side. So now in the question, you, you can just take the pencil and you can mark, okay, that, uh, that 5.3 gram and then the 6, six gram, that is an left-hand side. So what you have to do is you have to take an addition of this one, okay? So 6, 5 will get 11.3 gram, right? And now you can just take the pencil and you can mark, okay, that uh, the, the other 2.2, 0.9, 8.2, and then you just if you make this totally okay, if you uh, take the addition, you'll get 11.3. Clear, students. So, means if, whenever in the question, if you get product, means that is the right hand side. Okay, product means right hand side. Okay, and something if the if this react with this. If you get some questions like, see here, we, we get a question like, sodium carbonate reacts with sodium ethanoate. 
then this means it is left hand side okay and product means will always be the right hand side so now here since the left hand side if we take 8.2 2.2 and 0.9 if you calculate this sum you will get 11.3 that means the left hand side and the right hand side is equal so this obeys the law of conservation of mass clear so now we'll see the second law of chemical combination okay so students now the second law of chemical combination it is law of definite proportion okay law of definite proportion and this is given by whom joseph joseph l proust p r o u s t okay now uh, students according to this law this means that uh, in a chemical substance okay in a chemical substance ele uh, elements okay elements are always like contained in a fixed proportion okay fixed proportion and now this i'll give you an example okay say now water okay water water means this is very common right h2o h2o water is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom clear now if you collect the water from the river lake pond stream anywhere the composition will be same two hydrogen atom and one oxygen okay or water from different parts of country if you see their composition is same clear now suppose uh, apple let's take apple apple uh, apple if we have six or seven apple together there though it's an apple but there might be some changes right in the shape but here in case of water it will be the same clear so now here uh, you have to remember that one hydrogen okay one hydrogen the it is one gram clear and oxygen means 16 gram clear hydrogen it is one gram and then oxygen it is 16 gram but how many hydrogen atoms are there in this one gram of water we have two hydrogen atom that means this would be two gram right and then how many uh, oxygen atoms are there just one so oxygen is 16 gram right so now this would be 16 gram so now here uh, we have to take a simple whole ratio okay simple whole ratio so now the simple whole ratio would be 2 1 right 2 1 2 8 clear 2 1 2 8 that means in a water okay in a water one gram of hydrogen is reacting with one gram of water that's the composition of water clear one gram of hydrogen reacts with one gram of uh, eight gram of oxygen no matter where uh, it is like a river it's, if we collect the water from the river or sand or from the pond or anywhere the composition is going to be same clear okay so students uh, i will show you another example let's say in a three gram of water clear now let's say in a three gram of water this is three gram of water okay that means three gram of water so we'll just write three clear and then here h2o right h2o so now in one gram uh, in one hydrogen we know that it's one so now here we'll have one into two right since we have two hydrogen atom so this will be uh, two clear two hydrogen and this oxygen is 16 right so we'll have 16 clear now i'm just putting a dot here just this is an example clear now three into two six right now three into 16 right now when we take this ratio that means we'll get six one and then six eight the 48 see 
Now, even, in, even here, though we have 3 grams of water, if we take a simple whole ratio, the result is 1 8. Clear? And in the beginning, I've already said that uh, water, wherever it may be, it will compose of this 1 by 8 ratio. Clear? So we can say that elements combine to form a compound in a simple whole ratio, that is 1 is to 8 for hydrogen for in, in case of water. Clear? But this, uh, even for other compounds, let's say ammonia, even for ammonia, it is going to be the same, or whatever compound it is, they will always have this simple whole ratio. Clear? So now we are clear with the first two law that of chemical combination, that is law of conservation of mass and law of definite proportion. And the next, uh, for, for Dalton's atomic theory, we'll discuss tomorrow. Clear? Uh, but now we'll talk about the uh, element symbol. Okay, element symbol. Okay, so students, now we'll discuss about element symbol. Okay, now do you know that in, a, uh, in chemistry, okay, in periodic table, we have 118 elements. Clear, 118 elements. And all the elements they have their own symbol. Now, uh, for now it, now, it is very easy for all of us. Because for hydrogen, I can just say H. For sodium, I can just say Na, right? But a uh, long time, many years back, it was very hard. So now this guy, Delton, Delton came up, Delton came up with a symbol, okay? Now he said that hydrogen, let's put hydrogen this way, a circle and a dot, okay? And then for uh, copper, like this. Okay, and for sulfur, like this, clear, a plus sign. And for phosphorus, like this, so this is hydrogen, copper, this is sulfur, and this is phosphorus. Okay, hydrogen, copper, sulfur, phosphorus, I, we have lots, okay. So Delton found out this symbol and then uh, they started, people started using this symbol. But with time, like more and more elements started like to uh, discover, okay? And then it was so hard because we cannot always remember this symbol, right? We cannot always, whenever we are, uh, we are trying to write a water, we cannot always use this symbol. It will take time. So this guy came, okay? Now, Berzelius. Berzelius, okay. So, uh, you can just mark their name in the textbook, okay? So now Berzelius uh, came and then after Delton, okay? And he said that it'll be easy if we just uh, keep the symbol in alphabetical form, okay? Alphabetical form. So see, for hydrogen, now we have H, right? But even helium is H. It starts from H. That's why since we have two H, no? hydrogen, hydrogen, we are using H. Now, helium, we cannot use H, right? Helium, we cannot use H. That's why for helium, we use HE. Clear? So that is uh, one thing. And the second thing is, whenever you write a chemical symbol, that means uh, the second letter should be in the small letter. The first letter should be in the block letter. Clear? We cannot write like this, HE. Okay? This is wrong. Clear? And so that is all about ele elements and symbol. Uh, please note down whatever we have discussed today. We will continue with the second part of this atoms and molecules and uh, Dalton's atomic theory in the next class. Thank you so much, students.